Well, hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world, and welcome to this Autodesk Manufacturing Webinar. My name's Clinton, and it's my pleasure to be your host today as we take a look at the latest release of Autodesk Fusion 360 with PowerMill, that being version 2024.0. Now, before we get going, I just need to pause for a moment and show our standard safe harbor statement. Now, whilst today's presentation will focus almost exclusively on functionality that will be included in this latest release of PowerMill, I may mention ongoing development work that could be included in future releases. Where possible, I'll make this clear, but please note that things can change, meaning features may be delayed possibly indefinitely. And so you should take this into account when making your purchasing decisions. Our agenda today is as follows. We'll start with a quick overview of the release before going into more details about the latest update. Once done, we'll spend a few minutes explaining how you can learn more and when and how you can download this version yourself. Finally, if you're completely new to PowerMill, we'll provide a little more guidance on how you can learn more and try PowerMill for yourself completely free. So PowerMill 2024.0 will be released starting on the 10th of May, 2023. And as with previous releases, eligible customers with an active subscription or maintenance plan will be able to access the update through your Autodesk account starting on this date. And simply visit manage.autodesk.com to download that version. Now we're going to go into more detail about downloading this version later in the presentation, so stick around for more advice. Now continuing the theme of previous releases, this latest update of PowerWare includes a mixture of new functionality and improvements that all have a positive impact on the quality of life as you use PowerMill every day. So let's continue by reviewing some of the major highlights in this particular release. Now, I've picked the top six improvements that I see in PowerMill 2024. There are many more, but let's kick off a quick summary of the six headline acts. The first is some updates to the flow line finishing strategy with the addition of a new tooltip step over type. We're going to cover that in more detail shortly. We've added some automatic filters to find and remove small areas when using flat machining strategies. We've added options to allow you to control the minimum axial engagement when using step cutting in area clearance toolpaths. We've added an overlap setting to the recently added rest finishing strategy. We've improved machining setups to allow the ability to define point distribution settings. We've enhanced our deep drilling cycles with additional controls over the deep pecking cycle and withdraw distances to make deep drilling safer and we've improved the quality of our uh, uh, automatic raster angle calculation and many, many more. So let's continue now by taking a closer look at some of these updates and the impact that they will have on you when you use PowerMill. We'll start with updates to the existing flow line finishing strategy. Now a new step over option has been introduced called tool tip that removes the reliance on embedded patterns and can create better quality toolpaths with less likelihood of fragmentation. The new tool tip option calculates step overs based on the position of the tool tip as opposed to the contact point on the tool. It's a subtle difference, but the impact is that this means that you no longer need to create embedded patterns. And as we've mentioned, it creates better quality toolpaths. But expect to see subtle differences in the shape of the toolpath step overs. Now, whilst you don't need an embedded pattern, we still need to define a pattern that contains two pieces of geometry. An additional benefit here is that the tool tip step over option supports the creation of spiral toolpaths, meaning you can create toolpaths with fewer lead in and lead out moves that can leave witnesses and witness marks on your machine parts. It's also worth noting that this new option does not yet support the machining of undercuts. And so the previous option, which is called model step over, should be used in these cases. Now, the biggest impact here is the amount of time and effort that will be saved, as you don't need to spend all that time creating these highly accurate embedded patterns. And this is something that we know can be time consuming and error prone, especially if you're working with low quality imported CAD models. 
Our next enhancement relates to flat machining and sees the inclusion of a new option to automatically exclude flat areas that are smaller than a user-defined value. The example on screen shows flat finishing toolpath being used on a mould core block. We can see that the area filter has been used to avoid machining the very tops of the small blue ribs. It's worth noting that this enhancement impacts multiple toolpath types in power mill, uh, including flat finishing, inclined flat finishing and more. Now the obvious benefit here is reducing CAM programming time as it's no longer necessary for you to manually remove these small inefficient toolpath segments, something that takes skill and a lot of time and attention and it's easy to get wrong, especially if you're working on large or complex toolpaths. Moving on, our next update relates to the REST finishing toolpath that was introduced into PowerMill 2023.1. This toolpath type combines the accuracy of rest boundaries with the precision and control seen in toolpaths such as corner finishing. Now, the release of PowerMill 2024.0 sees further improvements with the ability to define an overlap value. This causes PowerMill to produce a toolpath that machines slightly more of the rest area, increasing coverage and reducing the likelihood that small regions of material will be left unmachined near the very edges of rest areas. Now, the key benefit here is improving part quality and reducing the potential need for manual polishing after your machining is finished. The next enhancement affects area clearance toolpaths or roughing toolpaths. For many years, PowerMill's area clearance toolpaths have included the ability to automatically create intermediate slices that can help reduce the terracing effect that will be left on the machine path. This is called step cutting. Now, in some cases, step cutting can create toolpaths that contain many small toolpath segments that remove material in an inefficient way, basically wasting time and increasing tool wear. PowerMill 2024.0 improves on this with the introduction of a new minimum axial engagement setting that can automatically remove any toolpath segments where the tool would engage into stock that is less than the user-defined value of thickness axially. This enhancement impacts multiple area clearance toolpaths, specifically those that support the step cut option. So this includes, but is not limited to, model area clearance, model profile, 2D curve area clearance, and feature pocket rest area clearance. Now the key impact here is that PowerMill will now create toolpaths that are more efficient, removing the seemingly wasteful cuts, which should shorten overall cycle times and have a positive impact on cutting tool life. Moving on, uh, and continuing work that was started a few releases back, PowerMill 2024.0 includes an additional update to machining setups. In previous releases, setups were updated to, to allow the definition of stock, clamps, machine tools, connections and thickness settings, and allow those values to be applied to all toolpaths contained within that setup. This latest release of PowerMill improves on this with the addition of point distribution settings too. This simplifies CAM programming as users have fewer settings to manage and remember. And as with the previous enhancements to setups, if a calculated toolpath is moved into or out of a setup, the user will have the option to update that toolpath to use the settings for that setup or choose not to and keep, it, keep those settings as unique to that separate toolpath. The biggest benefit here is saving time and reducing the pressure and stress on the CAM programmer as there were fewer settings to remember, and this should result in greater programming confidence and consistency. Our next enhancements relate to hole drilling, and specifically a number of important settings that impact the deep drill drilling cycle type. Now the first change impacts deep drilling tool withdrawal distances. When deep drilling or when drilling deep holes, we tend to use a multi peck cycle combined with long and thin tools. The tools need to withdraw between each peck to allow swarf to be cleared. Now, as we can see with this first video, it is possible for the tool to withdraw fully out of the hole, but this can be problematic as the tip of the tool may catch the edge of the hole <clears throat> as it re enters, causing the tool to snap and possibly damage the workpiece. 
Now to address this, Powermall now includes an option called distance from top that controls how far the tool withdraws out of the hole. This can be set as either positive, i.e. The, uh, the tool withdraws fully out of the hole, or negative. If a negative value is used, as you can see in this video, the tool will partially retract from the hole and stop with the tip still engaged in the hole. This ensures the tool, is, the tool is supported by the hole and greatly reduces the risk of it breaking as the tool re-enters into the hole. Now, the second change relates to the pecking distance used for deep drilling. When using deep drill, it's common to define a peck depth that gradually reduces as the drill gets deeper into the hole. After each peck, the tool withdraws then plunges back to a point just above the next peck. It's here where problems can occur, as power mill has historically used the retraction factor to control the depth of the plunge move before the peck. As we can see in this video, as the peck depth gets smaller and smaller, so does the clearance between the end of the rapid plunge move and the start of the next peck. This can cause the tool to engage into any unmachined swarf left in the hole, causing it to break. By comparison, Powermore 2024.0 now includes a new option to set a retraction length, which is a fixed linear distance that creates a toolpath where the plunge move will always stop a fixed distance above the start of the next peck. This greatly reduces the likelihood of the tool hitting swarf and breaking. Now, the benefits here are small but significant, with power mill uh, creating safer deep drilling cycles, which help avoid the costs and pain associated with tool breakages. And finally, the last update we'll cover today relates to improvements to the automatic calculation of raster angle. This is something that affects many tool parts in power mill, including raster finishing, flat finishing and many more. This latest update of Powermore includes a small but significant change that improves the quality and consistency of the raster angle that will be used. Powermore will now more accurately identify the longest edge on a region and align the raster angle with it. This means that toolpaths will match the shape of the part more accurately, contain fewer plunging retraction moves, which can all improve surface finish and reduce machining cycle times. So there you have it, a quick review of the major highlights in Powerball 2024. Now, before we explain when and how you can download this version yourself, let's just have a quick reminder of the updates we just covered. Powerball 2024 includes new tooltip options for flow, fin flow line finishing, a new option to automatically filter and remove small areas from flat machining strategies, options to control the minimum actual engagement when using step cutting in area clearance, improved rest finishing with a new overlap setting, enhanced machining setups with the ability to define point distribution settings, safer deep drilling with those controls over peck and withdraw distance, and improved quality of automatic raster angle calculation, and many other small but significant updates that will improve your overall user experience when using PowerMill. Okay, so now we've reviewed the release. Let's see how you can learn more. Now, there's a number of choices here. You can watch a series of tutorials that dig into the individual updates in this particular release. Simply go on to YouTube and search for PowerMill 2024 to see all of the video content for this and previous releases. You can also access the online help simply by downloading PowerMill and clicking the F1 key or visiting the website address that you can see at the bottom of the screen where you'll be able to access tutorials, data sets, release notes, information on known issues, getting started and essential skills. A note for those of you that, that don't have English as your first language, this website is localized into many other non-English languages too. So when can you expect to get this release of PowerMill? Now, existing customers should receive the latest updates automatically starting on the 10th of May, 2023. Now this happens in one of two ways. Either 
by logging into the Autodesk desktop app. That's the app that is generally displayed in the bottom right corner of your Windows taskbar. Um, click on the Autodesk A and you'll be able to start this process. Alternatively, you can log into your Autodesk account at manage.autodesk.com and you'll be able to download the software there too. So you can launch the Autodesk desktop app simply by clicking on the small Autodesk logo in the Windows taskbar. Uh, open the app that launches, simply log in using your login details, and you'll see a list of the Autodesk subscriptions that you have purchased. Pick the product you'd like to install, in this case it's Panel 2024, and then click Download Update. Alternatively, Log into uh, your Autodesk account online at manage.autodesk.com. Once you've logged in, you can see a list of your purchased products and subscriptions. As before, select the product you'd like to install and click download update. And once the installer is downloaded to your PC, follow the on-screen prompts to complete the installation process. Now, some of you may be watching this presentation and thinking, Hey, what's Palomar? That looks pretty cool. How can it help me get better use out of my CNC machinery? Well, if you're new to Palomar and would like to know more about its capabilities or pricing, I'd encourage you to visit the Palomar Product Center at autodesk.com slash Palomar. You can watch handy videos to learn more about Palomar's capabilities, its latest features, and read stories about our most successful customers. You can also connect with our team of manufacturing specialists to take advantage of a free, no obligations evaluation of your business needs. We can review your biggest challenges and headaches then identify the best Autodesk solution for you, including the option to access short term and long term software evaluations when you get to use Powerwall completely free with your own data. So that brings us to the end of our present today, presentation today. I'd like to thank you very much for your time and wish you all the best for the remainder of your day. And with that, thank you and goodbye.